Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this little guy right here. This is the BRS Evolve Eon Pocket Knife. Um, first off, though, I want to thank very much BRS for sending this guy along. In the name of full disclosure, they reached out to me and said, Hey Nick, you want to check one of these guys out? I said, Absolutely. Actually, maybe I messaged them about it because it looked really cool. Um, but nonetheless, um, I sent them my full disclosure. They they said, Sure, absolutely. I told them I'm going to talk about the good, the great, the bad, the ugly, might be a gem, might be junk. They still sent it along. We have to assume there's the very best quality controlled one of these guys ever. And I'm doing my very best not to let this affect the nature of my review, but nonetheless, there you go, full disclosure. Next thing, size comparison. Um, this guy is actually a reasonably large knife. Um, here it is against the uh, Spyderco uh, uh, Paramilitary 2. Here it is against the Spyderco uh, Delica and the uh, Ontario Rat number 2. So there you go. Um, we can see here, yeah, it's actually pretty reasonably sized. And if we do a, a quick blade measurement on this guy, we are coming in here around 3.6 inches or so. It's a uh, non-trivial size. Next thing, this guy is um, an Elijah Isham design. As you can probably tell just by the nature of the beast here, this this has a little bit of Elijah Isham on him. And Elijah Isham's a, an absolutely great designer. Um, has a tendency for these kinds of swoopy lines, and uh, it, 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 it's pretty awesome in that way. And then finally, this guy is being made overseas. Um, I don't, I didn't see on their website a specific factory. I have my suspicions. Can make a creative guess, but nevertheless, um, this is a uh, a very interesting little knife. And I am a, uh, very happy to take a look. So let's go ahead and jump into the good, the great, and the bad, the ugly of this very interesting knife. So on the good side, to start with, um, this is an integral knife, but it's actually very well designed for takedown. Um, all that you need to do to take this guy apart is unscrew one screw here. That's this little guy right here. You unscrew that screw. You're able to pop this side out, pop this side out, and then you pop out the stop pin and you take out the blade and do what you need to do here. It was a very, very easy takedown, and that's something I always appreciate. And that's one of the benefits of a good integral. And speaking of integrality, um, we should talk about the fact that it is an integral. What that means is that the pocket knife itself, the handle of this guy, is made out of one solid chunk of titanium. There is a clip attached to it, but in practice, on most knives, uh, for instance, uh, da, 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 here we go, the Ferrum Forge Archbishop happens to be on my table. There is one slab of titanium, a backspacer, and another slab. This guy is a single piece. It's been milled out like a taco with a lock bar cut in there and whatnot. Um, that's actually a very impressive little uh, machining feat there, and uh, as a result, you get something that feels very solid and also something that is just a neat object, right? Um, they've also put in a lock bar insert, which is something that is definitely, um, well, becoming more common, but uh, it's very nice to see. So that's good. Next thing I have to say, um, this is branded very subtly. You can see there are exactly two pieces of branding on this guy. One is this little guy right here, the Revolve series, and the other piece is right here. This little motif here is a very common thing from BRS, Blade Runner Systems. Um, these are folks who generally do uh, ballast songs, but, f you know, have been doing these regular pocket knives that have been coming out quite good. So um, that's absolutely a beautiful thing. Next thing, this guy actually has very good balance. What I mean by that is that the balance point of this guy is exactly where you would want it to be in your hand. Um, it, as a result, just feels very nicely done in the hand. You would expect with a big integral handle on this guy that it might actually be poorly balanced, but no, in fact, it, it works out quite well. I'm very impressed with that. Next thing, this has an awesome action. Um, it, it, we'll talk a little bit about the strength of the detent in a second here. But what you'll see here is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to position my hand so my wrist cannot move, and I'm going to flip this guy out. Yeah. 100% reliable. Um, the only time, is, sometimes if you've got pressure on the lock bar, you will fail to flip this guy, but that's only because you can't get enough force on it. Um, but uh, this guy flips absolutely reliably. And then on the other side, it is very, very smooth to close. And it opens with a super satisfying thunk. Oh, yeah. It's hard to kind of express at some level, but a, a good integral uh, pocket knife, particularly a flipper, just has a, a sort of bank vaulty feel that is actually quite nice. And it's something I, I've grown to appreciate as a completely crazy person. So that's good. Next thing, design-wise, it's neat. Um, look, I'm a big fan of Elijah Isham's designs generally. I think very often his designs can go a little bit so far towards art that they become a little less practical. But I feel like this is a nice mix where you've definitely got an artistic touch, but you still end up with a pocket knife that is pretty damn usable on a regular basis. Um, and so that's definitely good. And one thing I want to highlight is the, the lanyard hole on this guy. This is kind of a silly thing to highlight here. I'll, I'll deploy the blade here. 
what we can see here is that this has an attractive lanyard hole. That's not a phrase that I'm used to uttering. In fact, this, this may be a historic occasion. But you can see here, there is a lanyard hole right here. and that's, that's a great thing. But it is actually cut into the integral handle in such a way that you can kind of get a little light in there. And frankly, it just looks like it actually contributes to the design itself. It sort of seems to mirror the, the blade hole here and actually makes the knife look a little bit better. I feel like this knife looks a little nicer because of the lanyard hole, and I cannot remember the last damn time I said that. So I got to give absolute credit where due there. Then finally on the bad side, and, or I'm sorry, finally on the good side, and this was something I went back and forth as to whether this was going to be the great or not, but this blade is freaking awesome. Um, this is a blade that's made of M390 steel, but it is ground super, super thin. I'm going to see if I can even show you the thickness of that edge. If we come down to the, the very tip here, this is a super thin grind. I am really impressed. And then with a nice thin plunge grind with a beautiful sharpening choil, this blade freaking cuts. I love this grind so very, very much. This is gorgeous. I appreciate it. And oh, damn, well done, <laughs> BRS. That's great. Um, And so to me, at least, all of that is the good is that it's got this amazing blade, a very neat design, awesome action, um, very good balance, subtle branding, and pretty easy takedown with an integral form factor. On the great side, though, the thing that ended up beating out that blade is actually the price tag. This is an awesome price. For a long time in the knife world, integral knives were kind of pegged around like 450 400 someplace in there, right? All of the major companies, when they did an integral, you're looking at 500 you know, 400 500 bucks, easy peasy. This guy is 290 bucks, and that is great. I am very, very happy to see that market getting pulled out a little bit because integral pocket knives offer a lot of goodness, um, and they offer it, a, and to see these at a price that are, uh, well, a little bit more uh, compelling, that's absolutely wonderful. And so I feel like 290 bucks for an integral knife is great, but with a blade like that, oh yeah. So this is a really solid value. I, I very much appreciate that, and this has an awesome price. So to me, at least, that's what's great here is this awesome price on the bad side. To start with, um, you're going to see there is a hole in the blade here, but uh, at least for me, I have zero chance of flicking out the blade with this hole. If you are a person who likes to flick a blade, as in this guy right here, Ferrum Forge Archbishop, um, that is a, uh, that's not going to happen here. You're just too close to the pivot, unless you got like really long, if you got like saber-toothed fingernails and you can flip, maybe you got a shot, but no. Practically speaking, no. Next thing, this guy needs some chamfering and rounding. This is a knife that is very clearly designed for the eye and just needs to be reworked a little bit for a hand. Just put the whole thing in the oven for a little while and let all the corners melt off a little bit. Particularly this back corner here is a bit of a pain in the neck. Particularly as you're flipping it, it's just going to be digging in right here. But just generally speaking, holding this guy in the hand, the design itself is very ergonomic, but there are just a bunch of little corners that need to be calmed down just a little smidge. This whole thing rounded off a little bit more would just be more comfortable in the hand, both at flipping time and generally. And that is one of the big downsides, or I'm sorry, one of the the main downsides here. Another of them is actually the lock bar pressure sensitivity. What I mean by that is that this guy has a strong detent. That's a great thing. You want a strong detent. Problem is, if your finger is, you are trying to deploy this guy, if your finger is resting against here, so any part of your flipping involves a pinch against the lock bar, which increases the strength of the force holding this blade in place, it gets really hard to flip. In practice, I have to train myself to keep my hands, keep this finger off of the knife and keep my hands on the clip because that'll allow me to flip this guy open. But the moment you put any force on that lock bar, it gets very, very difficult. And very often, I just found myself slipping off, which is not a beautiful thing. Um, next thing, this guy is a pretty thick knife. Um, at its thickest point here, we are approximating the uh, Spydeco PM2 and actually exceeding it a little bit. Um, that just means it's a bit of a thick boy in the pocket. Is that the end? of the world? Absolutely not, but it's definitely a thing. Um, and it also lends this knife to be relatively heavy. Where the heck is my scale? Here it is. We are looking here at 3.6 inches of blade, and we are coming in at uh, 4.47 ounces. It's a bit of a beefcake. So, and given the balance is good, but I really would love to see them slim the blade stock down, slim the handle down, just kind of put the whole thing on a little bit of a weight loss program, lose a little weight at the corners here. I think there's a way to make this guy maybe a little bit lighter that I think could make this guy a little bit more interesting to a lot of folks. So at least to me, um, all of that is the bad, is that it's a pretty heavy knife. It's a pretty thick knife. It's very sensitive to lock bar pressure, making it easy to fail to flip it, not because... It didn't deploy all the way, but because your finger couldn't pull it off, I'd like to see a little more chamfering and rounding, and this is definitely not a flickable knife.
the ugly front. There's nothing ugly here. So let's go to the final conclusion. Look, um, final conclusion, this is a super impressive knife for the price. Um, I, really, it's got easy takedown, integral construction. It's subtly branded with an awesome action, a great design, a really embra uh, impressive blade, and a price that's just competitive. It's really, really well priced. Mind you, it's not particularly flicky. It needs some rounding in some of these back corners here. It's very sensitive to the lock bar pressure. It's pretty thick. It's pretty heavy. I mean, there, there are some downsides to it, but honestly, it's pretty damn good. And in fact, I'd love to see a V2 with a little bit of extra chamfering, maybe a slim profile, a little bit of weight loss. Um, You know, just melt these corners a little bit. That would make it even more impressive. But even as it stands, I am really, really impressed. This is a great design with an amazing grind. It a price that really does feel quite exceptional. And honestly, if, if it were just a little bit lighter, or if these were just a little bit more chamfered, this would might probably go over the line into gem, and it's damn near there anyways. So I guess my final conclusion on this guy is that if you like the design and you like the construction, then absolutely you are going to love this knife, because they've done so many things correct, and they've done it at a price point that's really impressive. I am absolutely... Like I said, I'm blown away with this guy. This is putting BRS on my radar 100%, and I feel like the Eon here very easily could be integral uh, to your collection. Anyways, there you go. Hope you found this interesting, and have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.